Hello everyone and welcome to the Scrapbook Pal YouTube channel. This is Storm Polly from D Polly Designs and I'm so glad you could join me. I'm using the Honeybee Stamps Blooming View Stamp and Die Set. This is a 6x8 stamp set which is pretty big. You get a lot in this set. You get the window, the three really nice size flowers. I want to show you that this is a pretty good size stamp. The window itself measures four and a half inches tall by three inches wide. That's why I decided to make a five by seven card today, but you can definitely make a five and a half by four and a quarter also. And then you get eight sentiments, which can be used for various occasions, such as anniversary, sympathy, wedding, or just to say hello. You can purchase the matching die if you like. And what I love about the die set is that it comes with the dies to cut out the sentiments, which looks great on a card. So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is take my two window dies and I'm going to put the window pane one inside of the window die. And then I tape them in place so they don't move around. And then I'll run them through my die cut machine. I die cut three of them so I can stack them for dimension. And then I'm going to die cut one of the outline of the window from white cardstock. I'm going to use some liquid glue and stack the window panes on top of each other. This will give the window dimension on the card and keep it from bending when I'm ink blending it. Now I'm going to ink blend a sky background onto my window die cut. If you don't have any type of cloud die, you can easily make your own. I'm going to use my scissors to cut a wavy line from a 110 pound white cardstock. It doesn't have to be perfect. You just need some kind of wavy line. I did make mine with bigger humps on it. I think they look nicer than the smaller humps. I'm using my Distress Oxide ink tumbled glass and I'm just putting a very light coat onto my paper. I don't want my clouds to stand out on the card. I want the flowers to be my focal point and just have a very light sky through the window. And I'm just moving the cloud stencil down a little bit to the next section and then I just keep ink blending. I always start rubbing on the scrap paper first and then work my way down so I don't get any harsh dark spots on my paper. I also keep moving my stencil from left to right so that I'm not using the same section of the stencil all the time. Just a little note that when you get to the bottom of the paper, hold the stencil really tight because it will move around and you don't want to mess up at this point. And then you can remove the stencil and just finish ink blending the bottom. And look at how nice this frame looks on top of the background. Okay, now I'm going to do the window panes, and I really wasn't sure what I was doing with this at first. It was some kind of trial and error, but I was I was kind of going for a distressed look. So what I did was I ink blended with some distress oxide weather wood onto the frame, but I didn't ink blend the whole thing. I kind of made it splotchy looking and put it in random spots and made some darker spots and lighter ones. And then I brought in some Distress Oxide Black Soot and I put just a little bit around the edges and in random spots in the middle. I didn't go crazy because I didn't want my window to be that dark. In fact, I only think I put ink on the brush once and then I just kept using what was on the brush. Then I went ahead and adhered the window pane onto the stenciled background. Now I'm just going to stamp out all of my images with a black Copic friendly ink onto some white cardstock. I wasn't sure what sentiment I was going to be using so I just stamped all of them out so that I, I can have them and I'll use them on future projects as well. Now after looking at my window frame I decided I needed to distress it a little bit more. So I took a mono sand eraser and started to very lightly sand off some of the color I had just ink blended onto it. By doing this, it made the frame lighter, which I liked a lot better. And I was able to sand in certain spots to make it look more distressed and aged. And I got rid of a lot of the darker black that was on it. And after doing this, I was definitely much happier with the look of it. I'm going to quickly show you what colors I used for my flowers and leaves, but I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the coloring because I just did basic coloring, nothing special. So I'm only going to show you one of the flowers. 
I used R83 Rose Mist to color the entire flower in and then I brought in R85 Rose Red to make some of the petals a little bit darker in certain spots. Once the flowers were colored in, I used G46 Mistletoe for the bottom of the leaves and then I brought in G24 Willow just to blend it a little bit for the bigger leaves. And then to finish off the leaves, I brought in the YG03, which is yellow green, to make the tips of the leaves lighter. And I like how it makes the leaves go from dark to light, so I think that came out nice. Then I'm going to go ahead and line up my dies to cut them out and make sure to tape them in place so that they don't move around. And then I'm going to die cut my sentiments, and they're very easy to line up as well. I love when companies have dies to cut out the sentiments. I think it just makes a card look so much nicer, but that's just my opinion. I decided to make this a sympathy card, and I just will save the rest of the sentiments for future projects. I didn't want a plain white background, so I'm using my Spellbinder Dazzling Dots 3D embossing folder, and I'm just going to run this through my die cut machine. Follow the sandwich instructions for your machine. I decided to do some ink blending on the embossed background so it wasn't just a plain white again. I'm going to add a little bit of the weathered wood and I'm just going to very lightly go all around the edge and just a little bit in the middle of the card. You don't want it to be too dark because then the card would look kind of dreary because it is a grayish color. Now, after I ink blended this, I did go ahead and finish my card with just the weathered wood, and I'll show you that a little later on. And I, you know, put my whole card together, but I decided at the end that I wanted some pink to kind of brighten the card up. So at this point, if you want the pink edges, go ahead and ink the blend, ink blend them now after you do the weathered wood. I use the Distress Oxide Worn Lipstick. I adhere the ink blended background on top of a piece of white 5x7 card base. I am going to assemble my card. I cut some of the green leaves off of the big flower since it will be tucked under and you won't see it. This will get rid of some of the bulk. I adhere the window onto the card with some liquid glue. And I put foam tape on the back of the flowers and adhere them to the window frame. I put foam tape on the back of the sentiment and adhere that in the bottom right hand corner of the card. I took some self adhesive enamel pearl dots and put them randomly on the card. And to finish off the card, I took my white jelly roll pen and put white lines all over the tips of the flowers to give it some accent. Now, this is what my card looked like with just the weathered wood background. If you like it like this, then you could skip the, the step that I talked about when ink blending. But I decided after I put the card together, I wanted some pink on the edges. I just went around the edges very light handed and pressed down really good on the edges of the card. So none of the ink got underneath the card. And I just basically ink blended it. And I happen to like it better with the pink. But if you like the gray, then you can just leave it like that. That's going to complete my card for today. I want to thank you for joining me on the Scrapbook Pal YouTube channel. I would love for you to leave a comment below and let me know what you think of the card. And if you, if you want, you can let me know if you like the gray background or the pink background better. And if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to the Scrapbook Pal YouTube channel and their other social media platforms so you don't miss out on a any great inspirational videos. Also check out their website for any new releases they might have. And as always, I want to thank you for spending your time with me and I hope you have a wonderful day.